Okay, so today we're going to go through the setup of your Whoop class brushless quadcopters. So if you have a UR65, a Beta 75, a Happy Model Snapper 7, Happy Model Mobula 7, or an Emacs Tiny Hawk, this video will be for you. Okay, so before getting into the details, I want to give recognition to uh, Project Mockingbird. Project Mockingbird is essentially it started off for Whoop class brushed quads, and then it kind of migrated. There's a couple versions of it. There's a version one, a version two, and there's a version three for the UR65 specifically. I'm not aware of any other versions. I kind of they link to the next one in, in the doc, they edit it, and this is as far as I got for new links to, to chase down. So if there is any other ones, uh, please do let me know. First part we're going to come down to is the setup. So first thing they're saying is to take a look at your BL Heli uh, suite setting. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to plug my micro, and I for this one I have a um, Happy Model Mobula 7. I'm going to plug it into the battery powder here, battery power. And then I'm going to plug the USB into it. Then I'm going to go into Chrome and use my BL Heli configurator. Pick the port which I already selected, hit connect, and then hit read setup. Okay, so the first thing I see in here is that the start power is set to 1 per their recommendation. But the other thing I see is that the ranges are not set to 1000 2000. So I'm going to go ahead and make that update. And that has to do with the expected range of the signal, the PWM or pulse modulated width signal that's coming from the flight control board to the ESCs, which are on the same board, to drive the motors. So the normal range is 1000, 2000. That's what beta flight is going to be set. It's really just picking a standard that it can go by. They also, the project talks about making sure the ESCs are the latest up to date ESCs. So that's 16.7. If you needed to do that, you would hit flash all you would pick the most recent version and hit flash and that would flash the that firmware to all the ESCs which are basically little ROM chips additional ROM chips on the same board that uh, would have that firmware. The reason you want 16.7 and you would do that before you would set these ranges honestly you would check that first. On the Mobula 7 it already has 16.7 turtle mode already works so you don't have to worry about that it was just this range thing we have set here same thing the start power I'm not going to mess with, with anything else, um, beacons or any of that other, that other stuff. Looks like they're setting the beacon strength down to zero. Um, motors are pretty small. My experience um, messing around with BIA Heli too much, sometimes you make things worse than better. So we're just going to keep a limited uh, adjustments here. It's really important before you exit to hit right setup. That writes the settings you can see up here. Then you are good to go. So we can hit disconnect right here, and then you'll hear the ESCs boot up. Okay, we're done with BL Heli. Okay, the next part we're going to go into beta flight, and I'm going to unconnect the battery for that and then just plug it into the USB. All right, plugged it in, COM 16 is connected. Go ahead and connect again here. I was pleasantly surprised that beta flight 4.0 came preloaded on the Happy Model Mobula 7. Now it's not the full beta flight 4.0 since it's not an official stable release yet and I did a little research and what version it is, it is basically version 1179. Now in the Mockingbird project they talk about again about props out, they talk about D-Shot 300 and they talk about AK 2K. There's, I would do things a little differently and I'm not to detract, it's just hey I'm allowed to do things differently right? So I'm going to leave the stock, or what it comes with, which is a D-Shot 600. I'm going to leave motor stops on. I'm going to leave the percentage the same. Uh, the rest of the settings here, you can just see what I have. Uh, so these are essentially my recommendations, I guess, is the best way to say it. And uh, I would definitely turn off a lot of the beeper stuff. I'm not, I mean, it just beeps at you constantly all over the place every time you do anything. So I, this is what I would use for beeper settings. In the battery power, you do need to change this from 4.3 to 4.4 because we are going to overcharge the batteries a little bit. Okay, so let's get into the meat of it. So before we get into PIDs and kind of looking at the Project Mockingbird, and honestly, I would just go with their recommendations and test that out yourself. I haven't really vetted that, and I'm going to go with, hey, you know, they have way more experience than me. But I did want to get onto filters because they don't talk about filters a lot. 
and I don't think what Betaflight stock is is optimal. So the filters are under the filter settings tab and we'll come back to this in just a second but one of the big things is under the configurator if you didn't notice before is the dynamic notch is enabled and is recommended to be enabled for in the Project Mockingbird. However, the dynamic notch in 4.0 has multiple ranges. In anything prior to 4.0, uh, the dynamic notch really didn't go above 350 hertz. Um, I think in 3.5, we got it to go up to, I think 500 if I can remember right, with the quality of like five or something, some quality factor. So um, it was kind of half done. Now with the dynamic notch, there's multiple ranges. In the official release of Betaflight uh, 4.0, you're going to be able to set dynamic low pass filters, but we're not going to get into that yet. That's coming in April. For now, we're just going to leave it the 4.0 that it came with, which was I showed you that build number before. However, the dynamic notch for these micros is set to medium mode. So, how, where do I see that? Well, unfortunately, if you go to the PID tuning tab and under filter settings, there's nothing under here yet. I assume over time, once the uh, 4.0 full release, you know, the configurator is usually one release behind because they don't want to spend time updating configurator if things change once it gets out to the, the broader uh, user base. So for now, you have to go into the CLI. So I'm going to CLI. We're going to type get DYN. And if you do that, you can see there's a couple options here. Now, by default, the Mobile 7 specifically, and any of the, I would, I would, guess most of if not all are going to be set to medium you can see the default is medium and for a five inch that's where you want it to be but for a micro quad like a three inch and below the vibrations are really higher in frequency uh, for a three inch I know they're generally range from 200 to 800 Hertz so it's really long range where a, a five inch quad it's usually like two, 200 230 to like five or six hundred Hertz so these smaller machines have a larger band of vibration going up all the way to, to 800 or 1,000. And honestly, if you have a log of a whoop style, I would love to see it because they don't usually come with flash or SD cards, so nobody really has logs of these things. But just knowing what I know from three inches, um, we want to set this filter range to high. So we're going to type in set and usually before I do that I would just copy this I'm going to paste that in and then high you would have to type in high because this would say medium to begin with and that's it we're going to leave this as after static filters and we're going to leave the width at 40 and then after that we hit save okay so this is the part where I usually go into like a 20 minute dissertation about how you can set the low pass filters and the fundamentals of why I'm going from what the defaults are uh, in this specific build to the faults I'm about to tell you for this. I'm going to skip all that because people don't want to hear all that. They just want to hear what should I set this to. And you can see it in front of you. Just turn off low pass filter 2 for D term and for gyro and then set stage 1 at bi quad 150 and D term stage one at 200 as by quad as well. Based on the calcs that gives you a nice aggressive 3.8 milliseconds of total phase delay that's adding in the D term as well so you only get one millisecond from the D term and then you get 2.8 from the gyro so it's pretty aggressive setup I've flown it many times everything's fine on the Mobile 7 I'm gonna go with the assumption that all these other quads are fine as well what you do, what you can do is, once you have this all set this way, go ahead and do a short indoor flight or somewhere where it's warm. If you're in the northern hemisphere now, go to a, a warm spot and, uh, you know, fly around a little bit. Do check your motor temps just to cover my bases there. Mine, they're totally fine. There's nothing and no heat at all. And uh, from here, you honestly, you can move these up. Uh, I haven't really explored logs on these little whoop style class, but I'm going to go with some base assumptions from everything I know. It's, it's going to be high frequency, low amplitude noise because there's just not a lot to really shake in uh, high amplitude there. So uh, I'm going to go with that and these filters are going to give you max attenuation uh, really above the 200 hertz range. Uh, you could probably move these up so you could 
probably move this up to 200 or maybe even make this 250. You want to have a little bit more filtering on the D, so you generally you want to have this a little bit lower than if you're going to get aggressive than what you have on the gyro, but feel free to, to move the gyro up um, a little bit more if you want to, you want to keep pushing it. But that's up to you. Like I said, if somebody does have some logs, uh, I do want to get an open lager, L-A-G-E-R, uh, not logger, and uh, do some logs on this thing, so we'll uh, come up with that in the next video. The other thing I want to do is upgrade this to the latest builds of Betaflight 4.0 where we have dynamic low-pass filters, where these honestly go way up. Um, and a dynamic low-pass filter, this will follow the motor noise all the way up to six, 700 hertz. So this will ramp up as you ramp up throttle. Uh, with statics it won't. And that's why I'm saying this can go a lot higher. Uh, D-term on the dynamic low-pass filters usually goes from, well, the defaults are, it goes from 150 to 250 as you ramp up throttle. So you can see this range doesn't go as far, but this one really goes up a lot higher. So based on that, this could probably go up quite a bit and still be, and still be good. The other value I thought I could bring is just talking about how you can use one aux switch to use the flip over crash. I did notice that with that mode you do have to be in flip over crash mode first before you can arm. So on your transmitter, which I have a link in the upper right that you can set for mixes, for a spectrum at least, you can um, use some of your rate switches to have one switch do a lot of things. So anyways, using a dual rate switch to get this aux one first into flip over crash mode and then by adjusting the sliders then when I arm it it would now it's now in flip over crash mode for arming to flip it back over and then after I'm done I can disarm turn off the dual rate and now when I arm it just just arms there's no flip over crash the other part is uh, a lot of people talk about it's almost like a compromise like if it's either air mode or angle mode and I think a lot of times they're they're looking at these air mode as a feature here. You know, oh, I, you know, it's either air mode on or off. And the downside with the whoop class is if air mode's turned on here as a feature, as soon as you arm the prop spin, that means as soon as you crash and you go to zero throttle, the props don't stop. You have to disarm, just like a five inch. So I would not turn on air mode here for, and I would have motor stop on. Now that's not how I operate with a five inch, but for a, uh, these little whoop classes, I do like it that way. Just go into your modes tab have on aux 2 air mode and then when you're in the uh, when you don't have angle mode uh, enabled so when you're basically in rate mode air mode's turned on and when you go into angle mode which is most likely inside then you don't have air mode now obviously in angle mode you can't do a flip or a roll in the house and obviously in uh, when you're in rate mode well, now you can, but now it's not going to auto level. So that's, yeah, that's what I want. So specifically the Mobile S7, to me, it's an indoor-outdoor, 1S indoor, 2S outdoor. I'm going to be operating in rate mode outside, but when I'm inside, angle mode. Okay, everybody, do be sure to check out the Project Healing Mockingbird V3, and it's full. Read all through it. There's all kinds of more stuff. You can see I hardly went down through it. Um, they have stuff about transmitters and rates and all kinds of stuff. Do check all that out. And uh, thanks, I hope this helped.